Hey everybody, welcome to Paladin's University Lecture 2. In this lecture, we're going to be covering resources. Now, resources are probably the single most universal core concept of every esport. Pretty much no matter what game you've played, most likely at a top level, resources have been a really core concept. Same for like League of Legends, Dota, uh, Valorant, Overwatch, pretty much everything uses resources. And sort of because of this, it means they're relatively easy to understand. Like, it's pretty easy to understand what a resource is and, like, how you use them and stuff like that. Um, so while the last lecture on space was more sort of explaining space and, like, what it is and how it gets taken or made, this video is going to be more actually around teaching how to effectively use resources in Paladins. Okay, before we get into how to effectively reuse resources, I just wanted to make sure everyone's on the same page and go over what are resources. So really, resources are pretty much everything that you can think of. The most notable ones, the ones we're going to be talking about the most, are specifically abilities are really important to think of as resources, uh, and your health is also really important resource, although there's also other things that are pretty helpful to think of as resources like numbers, like number advantages, how many players you have versus how many players the enemy team has can be helpful to see as a resource. It's not too often in Paladins that this comes up, but it can definitely happen with things like the super aggressive off tanks like Rom and Ruckus. Sometimes it is their job to just die and, you know, create some advantage for your team. You know, they sort of like trade their life as a resource for a bunch of the enemy resources. Um, space, like what we were talking about in the first lecture, can also sort of been seen as a resource and it is helpful sometimes, you know, you're contesting space, you can sort of use that how you want, right? Or you can, you know, take some of their space, take some of that resource away from them by using some of your own resources, stuff like this, and we'll talk about this a little bit more later. Another important thing about resources is that they can be thought of both as used for yourself and for your team. Um, but since they're sort of a part of your team, in some sense, they're kind of inseparable, right? So anything you use will be used for your team or your team will also be affected by, right? And sort of same thing for your team too. Anything your team uses is going to affect you. And so while I will talk about resources sort of in personal play and in team play, just know that they're kind of inseparable in a sense that they affect each other very heavily. As a general rule, though, the larger, bigger effect or, or longer cooldown that a resource has, the more likely it's going to be to be one that you want to be using for your team rather than for yourself specifically. Uh, whereas some more like shorter, smaller effect cooldown things, maybe more expendable things can be used more for yourself and don't really have to think about your team as much when you're using them. And the last thing about resources is that resources have certain matchups, right? Um, certain resources are just like better into other resources and worse into other ones, right? So a really obvious example of this is Khan's F versus Ash's F, their movement ability. At face value, if you just take these individually, they're about the same level of ability. Like they're, they're both pretty good abilities. Um, but when you put them into each other, obviously Khan's comes out on top and completely destroys Ash's. Um, you know, Khan grabbed, completely destroys Ash's dash, right? It's just a really good matchup in that sense. And that's, again, going to be important later on. And so resources really are everything then, right? Because resources are involved in everything happens. Just like I was saying with space in the space lecture and, you know, space is a resource. It, it's really involved in anything. Anything that ever happens in Paladins, resources are going to be involved in some way, right? Anytime you're trying to do something, you're expending resources, trying to get a different resource. Anytime that uh, they're trying to do something, they're expending some resources to try to get one of your resources away from you, you know, things like that, right? And, and along with that, they all come with a cost, right? To use a resource means you don't have it anymore, right? Like in order to get a resource, you need to use resources, and to use resources, you don't have them anymore, right? That's a, that's a cost involved. So the game is all about trading resources that are less valuable to you for ones that are more valuable to you, right? So for example, you know, using a shield to get space or using your health to uh, get a little bit of a better position, maybe using an ultimate to kill someone and get a man advantage. Those are all sort of trades of resources, right? So Paladins then is all about figuring out what resources you most want and how to get them in the most cost effective way, which ones you should pursue and which ones you should use to obtain them. So then the majority of this lecture will be talking about effective resource use, you know, which resources to pursue and which resources to invest into getting those. Um, and so I just want to give a brief outline here because this is pretty much all we're going to be talking about is effective resource use. So I'm going to start with just some conceptual concepts that sort of provide an answer to that question of um, was answer to the question, was that resource used effectively? So you can sort of uh, analyze your play, I guess. 
And then we're going to go into some more uh, specifics with three important things to look at, which is like the when to use resources, objective-based resource allocation, and key resources, as well as then going into how resources should affect your personal play and how they should affect your team play. Uh, then the most overlooked resources, um, some communication around resources, is that's really important to get into as well. And then we'll end off similar to the space lecture with some applications for you that you can sort of take home with uh, voting, and we're going to go into zoning specifically. Okay, so the way I find most helpful to think about resources in terms of figuring out how resources are used the most effectively is to give them a function. And this is uh, the most helpful for abilities, although it sort of can be applied to other things as well. And so every ability has this sort of like greater function that's going to be defined by its mechanics. So the first step is just to look at all the resources you have and give them their function by first looking at their mechanics. So what the ability does and then sort of figuring out like, OK, what's their job or their purpose in the game based off of those mechanics? And, and sort of you want to keep in mind both the function both for you as a champion and for the sort of greater situation and game of which what role they play in your team as well. So just both for you and for your team. Um, so let's take an example here of Ash's dash with her DR talent. Um, so the basic mechanics of this ability is she pretty much charges up um, a little bit with high damage resistance while she's charging and then she quickly dashes forward across a, a very large amount of space very quickly, especially if she goes off of high ground. Um, and the first thing she hits, she will stop, do damage, and knock back. So thinking of those mechanics then, you can sort of think about, okay, so what is the sort of function of this ability? What's his job? What is it supposed to do? And so um, I usually, it's really helpful to separate things into sort of primary, secondary, tertiary, etc. functions, as we'll see in a second. Um, so I would say the primary function of Ash's dash here is just to can cross contested space, right? It's a very long range dash in which you can get very far very quickly, so you can cross contested space very easily. Especially DPS contested space, you can't really cross like through someone directly, so a tank is a little bit harder, but especially for DPS, right? Um, and then some sort of secondary functions, if she has a DR talent, you can sort of sustain in contested space. You can um, eat a lot of damage with that DR when you're charging up. Um, and it's really good for rotating. Obviously, it's a movement ability, so rotation is always going to be a good function of it. And then maybe for tertiary, you can sort of move their contested space with a knockback or, you know, knock them back and have, you know, knockback itself can be a sort of interesting function. And then damage as well is always going to be a function of anything that does damage. So uh, looking at these functions then, any use of this ability is going to, any effective use of Ashdash is gonna fulfill at least one of these functions. Now, that being said, it's very hard to not use it for one of these functions because it's sort of defined that by the mechanics, right? So if you're using this ability, it's almost hard to imagine a situation where it's not gonna be fulfilling one of these functions. However, that's why it's so important to sort of separate it into these sort of primary, secondary, and tertiary functions, right? So you wanna be using it mostly for these primary functions unless like some situation makes the secondary or tertiary more valuable. Um, so let's take an example here. Okay, so let's say you're this Ash here, and you're on blue team, and red team has capped the point, or not capped the point, though they've won the initial point fight, and they're slowly capping point, and your team is on the retake, and you're going to be half, you're the one who's going to have to touch point. So if we look at sort of the space that's contested here, red team is essentially contesting, you see Khan is contesting like barn over here, you can't really go through this space because of Khan, and Victor's contesting um, all of the other space outside here, into the windows and all the way in stage all the way over there right so the only space that you really have available to you is like this oops sorry let me make that blue the only space you really have available to you is this space outside here right so if you're looking to effectively use your ash dash remember the primary function of ash dash is to cross contested space right so you're going to need to find some way in order to get the most use out of it to use it in some of this contested space or through some of this contested space to get to the point right and so really you have two options you can try to go up through here however this is probably going to be blocked by con right its mechanic is that it gets blocked it can be blocked and you know off tanks are often you can be looking for that so you don't really want to go through there right so let's say you're going to make this rotation somehow right that's the sort of rotation you want to make so if you were to dash here and then walk out here, 
that would not be an effective use of Ashdash because you're not fulfilling its primary function, right? You're not using it to cross the contested space. Whereas if you were to do that backwards in the other way, you're to walk this distance and then dash here, that would be an effective use because you're using it to cross the contested space, which is its primary function, right? And you also notice sometimes if you separate it like this, like in this example, it, using it in the first way here is fil fulfilling one secondary function, right? You're using this as a rotation. So this is a, a, a it is a use of ash dash, but it's not in this situation the most effective. Um, whereas if you use it, over here, you're fulfilling the primary function by crossing this contested space here. You're also fulfilling the secondary function of a rotation because just naturally that's sometimes gonna happen um, with abilities that their secondary function or, or their primary function, if you use it right, will entail some of the secondary functions. And actually in this situation, probably it's gonna entail both secondary functions of doing a rotation from windows to pit point, and it will be sustaining in contested space because you have to sort of peek the window into Victor to get that initial dash off and so the damage reduction will also be getting use, right? So just thinking about sort of how, like, like how does this ability fulfill its functions and am I feeling, fulfilling the primary functions or just like one secondary one, right? It's gonna be really important. However, um, this, you don't always wanna be looking only for your primary function, right? Like let's say for example, that you have a DD, um, a DD in window here, and he's getting pressured out by this con, right? So in some situations, the secondary functions are gonna outweigh the primary function just based on like that situation, right? So let's say con is fighting this DD and this DD needs help really badly. Then if you use your dash just as a rotation over here, or maybe even as like a damage and knock up too, and you save this DD because you dashed here rather than trying to walk here, that can be a more effective use than using it to cross contested space because the situation dictated that, right? Like your DD would have otherwise died. And so that was a really important and effective use of Ashdash. So pretty much that is to say that the, you know, you don't always have to use it for the primary function for it to be effective. Certain situations can make the sort of secondary tertiary and so on functions more valuable and actually outvalue the primary function. Another thing that's really great about breaking down resources in terms of their function, especially abilities that you can sort of help identify unusual or unique ways of using them that are very effective, but that aren't typically thought of or used. Um, so let's take the example of pip -Alt. If you look at it in terms of its mechanics, it's sort of a large AOE polymorph and those that get hit by the polymorph have their HP set to 1500 for the duration. And so by really breaking it down and looking at its functions, then you can see that it can be effectively used for so much more things than just um, as a tool for killing things in an area, which is pretty much the only thing that people use it for right now, right? Remember, it's also a polymorph. It also polymorphs a big area. So it's a great way to make space, right? Not killing chickens can be in a really effective use of that resource. Um, for example, when I used to play, we would use pip. Um, there's sort of the meta with Pip where he would just alt tanks at the start of mid really aggressively, and then you'd sort of win and snowball the mid off of that. Um, and sort of the meta developed whenever Pip got picked that people would pick tanks with sort of built-in CC resistance like Inara and sort of try to like Inara alt to counter it and bait out the chicken and things like that. And then they'd also just stack a lot of Rezil early. So it became really hard to get these effective chickens on tanks early and get that pick on the tank and sort of snowball the fight. So instead of that, we decided to, you know, so sort of play slow around mid, get some resources out of the tank, and then play really aggressively, have the pip sort of jump in, but then instead of alting the the main tank, like the Inara, he would just alt the everything in Inara's lane that was supporting her, so like the support and like the damage that were playing behind her, and he just alt them, which effectively makes a lot of space up mid for us to just like completely commit and kill this Inara without having to worry about getting shot and Inara getting healed. So you could very easily kill Inara except using the chicken not on her but on the things that are supporting her, right? And sort of by, by looking at it like that, you can sort of identify assumptions like that and say, oh hey, we don't actually need to use the chicken specifically on Inara if you want to kill Inara. We can also use it on the things that are supporting Inara and kill her and sort of use it to make space to kill an art instead. And so it allows you to sort of identify these sort of assumptions that you may have had about the abilities and use them in unique and interesting ways. So remember the big question or difficult idea with resources is like around which resources should you pursue and which should you give up for them?
And so this is something, honestly, that's very, very difficult, right? It will take a lifetime to master this sort of question. Um, so, for example, like if you're on ice mines and you're losing the mid, for example, uh, you have to sort of figure out what to do, right? So the first thing you have to figure out is like which resource do you want to pursue, right? Uh, do you want to, you know, maybe use something, try to get out some big resources from them so that you can start winning the mid. Maybe you need to take some space. Let's say you want to take some space, then you have to figure out, okay, which space do I want to take? Which space is important? Which space can I actually take effectively? All of those questions. And let's say you decide on some space, like let's say you want to take uh, stage with your ash or something, then you also have to decide, okay, now which resources do I want ash to use or, or do I want my team to use so that we can take that space? Should you use her like her health, the posture? Should she dash in? Should she shield in? Should you shield the DPS and have them push out a tank and then her dash on their DPS? Like it, the more champions you add as well, it gets more and more complicated. And so it takes a ton of sort of game knowledge and experience to be able to answer these questions well and really know what to do. Um, but there are some important things to think about that will help this um, that we will go over right now. So the first of these big things to look at is the timing, sort of when should you use these resources and when should you not use resources. And this is especially helpful when talking about like big uh, cooldowns such as ultimates, things like that. And remember that every resource has a purpose. And so it, no matter what, the only time you should use it is really when it's going to fulfill that purpose. Otherwise, you should be using something else or just not using it at all. Um, but more specifically, there's a couple things in specifically in terms of timing that are helpful to think about. So the first one is like the timing in the game. So like chokes, for example, really at a top level, ideally paladins would be played sort of like Overwatch is with the payload. Uh, on pushes and defenses where the defense holds specific preset chokes on the map or not even necessarily preset they they set up around specific chokes and the offense has to try to break those right so any ultimate that's used on pushes and defenses that isn't you know going to break a choke or hold the choke if your defense is probably not going to be a good a, a well timed resource right because if you use like a big ultimate when they're just sort of you know spawn camping you at um at a choke that doesn't really matter or that's really easy to break then you're not going to have it for the next fight which is going to be actually at a difficult choke to break and then you're not going to be able to break that choke and this is sort of very similar to with the time left in the round as well you sort of have to think about that if there's only five seconds left in the round and you've just started your push and they're at your spawn or something it's not going to be very useful for you to use an ultimate to sort of break out of your spawn because it's very unlikely that you secure the push anyways it's more valuable just to wait until the next mid and get the value there where the fight really matters rather than trying to you know hedge your bets winning like six fights in a row on the offense in overtime um and lastly you can also start of thinking uh, think about timing in terms of advan advantages and disadvantages. So if your team is already going to win the fight, you don't really want to be using any resources that aren't going to come back before the next fight, right? Like if you're winning a mid fight and you've killed three people, you don't want to pop an alt to kill that fourth person unless that's, uh, that alt is going to like stagger them in some significant way where they're going to have to commit before they get back or something like that, right? You don't really want to just like use it for the sake of, you know, securing that pentakill, for example, right? Like, this is a really big one. That's a really big problem in competitive play. People get like four kills and then they really want that fifth one so they can get that pentakill. So they use their alt to get it in a terrible time and then they just lose the next fight because they don't have that alt. And same thing with disadvantages, right? If you're already pretty much lost the fight, there's no reason to sort of use your alt or some big cooldown ability to try to swing the fight and make this hero 1v5 play because it's very unlikely to happen when you could just simply save it for the next fight and have a much much better chance at winning it. So the next thing to think about in terms of timing about using your resources is when you're sort of contesting space. So remember in the space lecture I said that when you're contesting space it doesn't rely on you using resources but it does rely on you having them available to you. Right, and this is really easy to see in some champions like Makoa, where they have really key abilities that allow them to contest space. So for Makoa, you often hear something like, the threat of a hook is better than the hook itself, right? Because if Makoa doesn't have his hook, he's way less threatening and he can't really contest that space as well. He's way less contested space than he does with hook up. So you only really want to use abilities like this. You only want to really use hook if the value you will get from hooking exceeds the value that it adds to your ability to contest space. So for example, if you aren't going to need to contest space in the next, say, 10 seconds or whatever the cooldown of the ability is, then you can use that ability pretty freely knowing that, you know, you're not going to be suffering from the lack of contested space. 
However, if you're actively contesting some very important space that the enemy is looking to get, you probably want to hang on to that cooldown and only really use it when it's like guaranteed to get a ton of value. So for example, if you're playing Mako on the right side of the map and they look to be playing or making playing around and making some play on the left side of the map, that usually means you're not really going to be needing to contest space on the right side. So you can go ahead and look for one of those maybe lower probability hooks that might get you a pick. However, if they're sort of posturing towards you and looking to get space on the right side of the map where you are, you'd rather save that until they start pushing or something and you can guarantee a hook on a squishy target and maybe get a kill with it. So thinking on the other side of that then gives us our third thing to think about when we're thinking about space, which is in order to effectively use your resources, you need to make sure that their key ones or the th key ones that they use to counter the ones that you want to use are down. So this can be really simple, like the, the con Ash matchup like we were talking about earlier. If Ash wants to make space in a lane, she's often going to need to use her dash to do that. And since her dash is countered by Khan's grab, you're going to need to make sure that Khan's grab is down or he can't use it for some other reason before you use that resource, right? You need to bait out that resource before you can use yours effectively. Right, and more generally, in sort of the mid, usually it's unwise to just go right at the start, full pedal to the metal, throwing down your resources because they're guaranteed at that point to have the ones that they want to use to respond to that available, right? So if you're some super aggressive team comp that wants to dive, you generally don't want to just go, you know, full on right at the start of the mid. For example, if they have a, a Maldamba support and he has ultimate up, He's just going to counter that wherever your aggression goes. He's going to alt there and sort of going to counter that very effectively, right? So the only time you'd really want to go pedal to the metal at the start is when they don't have their Damba alt up yet. So let's take just like a very basic example and say that you have Ash and Ruckusphere tanks and you think that Ash alt is a good aggressive tool, but it's not really going to outright win you the fight. But Ruckus alt is also an aggressive tool that you can use, and you think that one is going to outright win you the fight. However, let's say they have some defensive resource that is really good against both of them that can shut both of them down. So in that, in that case, you want to use the Ash alt first to try to get that first defensive cooldown out of the way so that you can more effectively finish the fight with Ruckus alt because you identified that that one would be your strongest finisher. So really all of this is just to make sure that you're fulfilling the sort of basic conceptual function of your ability, right? Like we were talking about earlier, you don't want to use a resource unless it can fulfill its function effectively. And if they have counters available to that, it's not going to be able to do that unless you specifically want it to take away that resource. And it's important to note too that it also don't have to think about it just in terms of like key resources in terms of like counters, right? It can also just be resources in general when you think of like indirectly contesting space. Okay, so if you remember this example that we talked about with indirectly checking space in the first lecture, it, it doesn't just take sort of their attention and shift their contested space to somewhere else, but it also pulls some resources, right? So if you want to take space up mid here as Bushim that they're contesting and you decide to indirectly take space by having this ROM run up the left side here. Remember it's going to take some of their attention away but it's also going to maybe pull some resources right like if ROM dashes up here and starts to contest space here they're going to be worried about that and they're going to use some resources right like Ash's time and attention are, are important resources here uh, maybe Maldamba's healing is going to come up here and support the Ash maybe he's going to rotate over and use some stuns you know Victory's going to use grenades uh, Andrew's going to use some dashes to rotate over here and pull there right so it's gonna it's gonna limit the resources then that they have available to use in the mid right it doesn't just pull their attention but also their resources so that you have less resources to deal with when you make your aggressive play up mid so another really important aspect of effective resource use is to look at where you're using them and if it's sort of in line with the greater objective of the game and so most basically you want to allocate the mo resources mostly in the places that fit your win condition right in every game sort of depending on your comp in the situation you're going to have a, a win condition or a couple win conditions that are going to be really important for you to obtain and those are like generally some sort of resource um like space or something for example right and so you want to make sure that you're committing the most amount of resources to that win condition rather than using them on some other resource that may not be as important to your win condition 
And so just as a very basic example, if you're like a healer and your win condition is sort of playing off point and reacting to what's happening in the game, you want most of your heals to be focused around point until like something else happens that is more important, right? If you're just in a sort of posturing situation and your win condition is playing off a point, then you want to make sure most of your resources are going into your point tag rather than your off tag, per se. Now, it's important that uh, I don't get you confused when I say win condition because often people think win condition is just like, okay, just play off point. That's sort of your win condition. But I'm more talking about like, you know, moment to moment, what you need to do to win the fight. Not necessarily like moment to moment, just in the general scheme of the game. And as it progresses, that's sort of going to change, right? So if you take like the same situation where you're a passive comp and you're the healer and you mainly want to be uh, focusing your main tank with heals, eventually the other team, if you're, if you're, comp is doing their job right the, the other team is eventually gonna have to do something they're gonna have to take some space somewhere they're gonna have to be aggressive somewhere and so that's gonna change the situation and it's gonna change the win condition of that specific fight to being where they're putting their aggression right so if if everyone's just posturing around mid and everything's normal then you want to put your resource into point however once they start making a play let's say in the off lane suddenly what happens in that off lane is going to be really important to who wins the fight so then that becomes a sort of win condition the progression of the win condition is not going to be into the offlane and so that is where you're going to be wanting to focus the majority of your resources because that is now the win condition for that fight that being said you don't want to focus all of your resources into the same time and space like if the offlane is getting pushed and that is the win condition you don't want to still throw all of your resources from every person onto that area uh, because then you won't have anything for anything else. That's sort of like resource economy, which we'll talk about a little bit later as well. Um, and so, for example, like the type of resource is important here, right? So not all um, of your resources function will align with the current situation or with your, your current objective. And so you don't really want to use them for that because then they won't match their function and it won't be a super effective use. Um, so, for example, if your win condition is or your objective in the current fight is to take some space on you know the right side of the map or something some resources are going to be good for taking that space namely the ones that have a function of you know crossing your tested space or taking some space in some way and so you want to use these ones on the other hand resources that are more defensive and reactionary in nature that aren't as good for directly sort of taking space maybe something like a barrack alt for example often isn't that great for taking space aggressively you want to save for either supporting that play in some way that matches their nature like if they're trying to make a counter flank on the other side or something then you can use it for, to uh, sort of stop that counter flank or simply to just save it for another situation where it's more in line with their function and similarly to the type of resource, also the amount or timing of resources, you don't want to blow all of them at the exact same time. So you've probably most commonly heard of this concept referred to as resource economy. As in Overwatch, it's a super important concept that gets talked about a lot. Um, and most basically, just as a basic example, if you use all of your alts in one fight and they use none of them, they're going to have a huge advantage going into the next fight, right? So if you use five alts, at the mid and they use zero then on their retake let's say they use like three of them they have an advantage in this fight because they have three alts and you have zero alts and then when you try to retake again you still have zero alts and then they have two alts left so again they're going to be an advantage and so they have an advantage two three of the two out of three of the fights and so that's just a generally really good advantage in the game um but also, this is also important just not just for ultimates, but for all resources, and especially in Paladins. Um, so let's imagine, just for simplicity's sake, that both teams start with 100 resources. And, I, you know, it's kind of weird to just give them a value of 100 like this, and let's say, you know, like, bigger numbers beat smaller numbers sort of thing. If you were to put 100 of your resources, take all of these resources, and take them in, in, into pushing apps like this, and they were to just give it up. So they're going to put zero resources into defending this. They're going to put zero. Then that's not really to your advantage that much. Because sure, you're going to get apps really easily. And you're going to control this space really well. But if they just give it up, they could just, you know, like give up this space. And take, you know, this space instead, right? And then it's still, you both still have a relatively even amount of space. Uh, you know, no one's at a significant advantage, except they still have 100 resources, and now you have zero, right? And so they're going to win the fight from here. Unless this ma getting apps magically wins you the fight somehow, they're just going to win the fight from here because you used all your resources. 
right so you don't want to use all of your resources in one area but you also don't want to use too little of them right so if you were to push stage instead with uh, 30 resources or push apps sorry with 30 resources and they were to defend it with let's say 50 then they would win this and they would win apps and your play would completely fail and you'd likely lose the fight because you invested resources into an area and they just completely countered it with more resources right and so really the key is that you want to commit more resources to plays than you're making than the opposing team would be smart to not that they're going to you can't really predict what they're going to so so what they would be smart what we, what they would be smart to commit into that area right so if you think it's only smart for them to commit you know 25 resources into apps that you think that's the max amount of resources that they should commit smartly then you want to make sure that you're committing to take apps something more than 25 resources um because anything less or equal will just result in a draw or a tie or, or they could win it and so your play might fail and a lot of this sort of comes up to how highly comps or, or teams value specific places or specific resources for example like apps is a, a resource is an important space as a resource and if your team is like really good in apps you might value the the space in apps as a resource very highly you might put the the value of apps at like 50 resources or something whereas the enemy team they might not really care about apps too much their comp might not work too much or too well in it and they might value it only at 20 resources right so while you're willing to put like 50 resources into contesting and keeping app space they might only be willing to put 20 into that and that's sort of like where the game knowledge comes in and game sense of like how much do you think they're willing or smart for them to put into it and then you can sort of match the correct amount of resources into it and so how does this actually apply to the game though right like it it's nice and conceptual and all, but it's sometimes hard to put this into practice. And that's because it takes a lot of game knowledge to know in game sense and experience where to put resources, how much to put them, right? You don't want to split them up too much or or not use too many because then you'll lose. You also don't want to put too much in or else you're just over committing and losing. Um, so as a general rule, I think the, the first thing that you want to make sure to do is not to split up your resources super heavily, right? So sometimes you'll see teams start with 100 resources and they'll put 50 into pushing apps on the side of the round and they'll put 50 into pushing um, the other side of the map so left and right and they'll put 50 and 50 right and this is not uh, generally speaking this is a very poor play and a very poor decision right because if the enemy has 100 resources they're just going to put like uh like 65 of their best fighting resources into apps here and they're going to win this fight and then they're going to put the rest of their 35 best running resources or disengaging resources into docks here and then they're just going to run away from this right so you're going to lose the fight in apps and you're not going to get that much value on the other side because they just ran and used their good disengage tools on your aggression on the right side right and so by splitting them up like that you kind of allow them to respond in this sort of perfect way uh that you know they can sort of get whatever right whereas if you were to commit let's say like 75 in one area of your best like fighting resources and 25 you know sort of covering your bases leaving things open for anything that happens next then even if they like give this up give up the space and apps and just run away or something you still have the 25 left over to do whatever with or if they instead decide that they want to fight this and they put a lot of resources into this you still that's 25 to sort of respond to that again and say okay if you're gonna put that much in we'll put the rest in and then you're not worried about you know them having the other side of the map and you know disengaging or whatever and so really what, what it comes down to is you need to like identify your win conditions and then figure out what resources and what functions of your resources match up with uh the plays that needs to happen for those resources and how much the enemy is sort of willing or is smart to put into that and then use just enough so not too much but just enough to beat that so you still have some left over and that's so you're not leaving yourself susceptible and then obviously adapt as the situation progresses because again if you put you know like 60 in and they surprisingly put 75 you can still put you know your extra 40 in there you can adapt to that situation and put the rest in there so the last thing that's really important to think about when figuring out which resources to go for and which resources to allocate to that goal is which resources are really key in the game. 
or, or even in the situation, right? So some resources are obviously just more valuable than others, like your ultimate is more valuable than your alternate fire. Um, however, they also sort of fluctuate based on situation to situation. Different resources can get to be different, uh, more valuable and less valuable, and also game to game based on the more specifics of the compositions and the map. And so I kind of mentioned this earlier, but, you know, even the functions of an ability go, you know, the priority one functions or um, the primary function might not be the most important in specific situations. Or for certain comps, a secondary function might actually be super important for your team. Your team might be lacking one of those secondary functions as a team in general. And so that might, uh, the, that, uh, that function of that resource might go up a little bit. Um, and so depending on the situation, you're going to want to use your resources differently. So let's take an example. Let's say you're playing Maldamba in a slow and reactive comp and you don't really have that many tools in the general comp. Your entire team doesn't have that many tools for reacting to uh, like heavy pressure. And so your Maldamba alt is going to be like a really key resource, not only for your self peel, but also for your team in general to deal with the aggressive plays that the enemy is bound to make. So then in this specific game, your Maldamba ultimate has a really key function in the entirety of how the game is going to be played. A lot of it is actually going to be played around your ultimate because it's such a key resource for your team to win the fights. And it's such a key resource for the enemy team that they have to play around. This sort of makes it especially important that you fulfill the function of its importance for the game, that you use it to stop their aggressive plays when they're making aggressive plays. So for example... If you, uh, let's say you go into a mid fight and your team gets a couple picks and they're sort of backing up, you've, you've won the mid fight, you're setting up around it and you use your ultimate to sort of catch someone who's backing up and your team gets a kill for it. Usually that would be a pretty good use of your ultimate because you can sort of stagger their response and make it longer, make it take longer for them to get back to the point fight. And so they're, they're either going to have to go early or not together or I have to wait until the points like closer to 99 which is a big advantage however in this situation because your team really really needs this ultimate to peel pressure from the enemies if they retake you're not going to have that for that anymore and then they're going to make an aggressive play on the retake because that's what they're comped as well and you're not going to have that really key tool for doing dealing with it and so you're likely to lose the fight right in this specific case while normally this staggering kill would be a good decision in this case you want to save it because it's needed for your win condition your, your key ultimate for your win condition so overall then every game will have key resources for both teams and in order to be effective with those resources you have to use them in line with why they're so important in that specific game and also other resources can be more effective by addressing these key resources you know sort of playing into them in some way and while I specifically mentioned uh, abilities as a resource, this often can be space as well as a really common one to be really key, especially if you have, if you have like snipers or something that play really well in a specific space. Okay, so I want to transition now into a different approach to effective resource use, and that being how to effectively play around resources. So the first thing to note is how your personal play should change based on the resource environment. So your play should be dictated by how much and which resources are likely to be put into you. Uh, so a very basic example of this is if you're playing Inara and your offlane is Healer Sky plus Torvald, you know that you're going to get a lot of healing resources, especially if you have like a big healer like a Ceres Bandy or something, you're pretty much going to be getting pocketed almost all game because that Ceres doesn't really have to heal anything else. So because you're getting pocketed so hard with so much healing, it changes how aggressively you play and how many resources you try to get out of the enemy, right? You're going to be playing much more aggressively if you have a Ceres constantly pocketing you than if you have like a Genos with two, you know, meaty tanks, for example. You're not going to be, playing, be, you're not going to be able to play as aggressively. Um, and it also changes how you use your own resources too, right? So if you're pocketed hard, you're getting a lot of heals into you, your HP as a resource is much more expendable than it normally would be, right? So you want to be using your HP resource very liberally, right? When you're making a play, instead of maybe entering with DR or walling off a DD, you can simply just sort of walk forward and eat maybe half of your health before you have to pop any of these cooldowns because you know that you're just going to get it healed up. And sort of similarly, along with this, your play should be dictated by which resources you need to protect, right? You want to protect key resources that you have from being used or taken from you. 
Um, so, for example, maybe there's important space for your comp to control. Let's say you're on Serpent Beach and you're, the high ground space is really important if you have sort of low mobility DDs uh, with no vertical mobility and low range like Tyra and Vivian because that's really the only place they can play from in the mid fight. So everyone's resources on your team should be invested into maintaining that space for your team. Right? If they ever threaten that, you want to make sure you're responding with resources. If they put like all of their resources into trying to take that away from you you should be using all of yours to try to counter that because that space is going to be so important it's so key for the fight um and this is like also very relevant for champion map setup so specific champions and specific maps like snipers often have places that they really want to play from and the other areas are very severely compromised blasters and rooms even can be really key um, maybe like we were talking about before, we'll take the Domb Alt as a resource. Let's say you're playing Anara again in a slow reactive comp and the, the Domb Alt you have identified is going to be the most effective tool at stopping aggression. If they start to make some aggressive play rather than throwing the Domb Alt right away because they might be trying to bait that out, you can instead say, you know what, I'm going to throw my Anara Alt to save the Domb Alt because the Domb Alt is more key, right? So you want to change the way that you play, maybe use your Anara Alt more liberally just so you can protect that Domb Alt, which is more key of a resource for dealing with their aggression. And then lastly, sort of in line with the other two, your play should be dictated by the key enemy resources as well, right? So let's say you're playing the Inara and Damba's on the other team this time, and you have, let's say like a Maeve Ruckus offlane. They're gonna be diving onto this Damba and the Damba alt's gonna be really important and Damba like Slither, all of their sort of defensive cooldowns are gonna be really important to counter your team's dive. So any way that you have to make them use defenses before the dive is gonna be really important for helping your team because you're taking out some of those key defensive resources from the enemy, right? So maybe you, you know, throw your Anar alt at the Maldamba before the dive happens to sort of force him to Slither out and then Maeve can alt and he can't get the free CC immunity and cleanse with his slither because he already used it to counter your alts. Basically, it's sort of all together, you want to make sure that you're looking at the specific game, looking at sort of what resources are being put into you, which ones are really key for both teams, and adapting your play so that you're using the things that are put into you and trying to get the most out of putting your resources most effectively into those sort of key spaces, those key resources that are going to be used by both teams. So just like the resource environment affects how you should personally play, it also affects how a team should play together. And so one commonly used example of this is amplifying your team resources, right? So this is sort of looking at like the obvious combos. Well, not necessarily always obvious, but let's look at some obvious ones like speed ups with BK alt, for example, make it almost 10 times as threatening when he's running at you like 10 billion miles an hour compared to, you know, slowly rolling at you. Uh, Furia Mave alt makes them both better. Uh, Genos Tal Assault is a great example of this, right? Like individually, Genos Alt is pretty bad and Tal Assault is pretty bad for an ultimate. Right? I, I wouldn't consider them very strong alts, but if they're together on the same team, on a team that knows how to combo them well, it's so terrifying. It's like worse than a Connell to go against, right? It, it's absolutely incredibly powerful, right? If individually you were to give the resources a value, maybe of like five, comboing them really effectively, they can get up to a value of like 25 together, right? It's almost five times the value. So then because of these combos are so effective, you really want to make sure identifying them as a team and using them as much together as possible, right? You, you'd much rather use them together than you ever would alone. It's also really important to cover your team's weaknesses with uh, your resource uses. So for example, shielding for a DPS is a really classic one like this, right? Tanks can use their health as a resource to be in contested space a little bit, but DPS usually can't, right? If a DPS could just use their health as a resource to be in contested space, like if a BK could just sit in Victor's LOS for free and burn a point tank, like he'd be completely and utterly busted and the game would be broken. Right, but shielding allows him to do that. Right, shielding covers one of their inherent weaknesses of not being able to sit in contested space, especially contested space from a DPS. And in champions have weaknesses for a reason, so it, it makes it cover it makes it so covering the weaknesses can be incredibly effective. Like the shield for a BK out in contested victor space is so much more effective than it is for Ash by herself if she's just sitting in Victor's contested space. So then it's really, really important as a team that you're using your resources not for yourself but for your teammates in a way that covers for some of their weaknesses and makes them even more powerful, right? Champions have weaknesses for a reason. If you can cover that weakness with a different champion with one of your teammates, it just becomes incredibly, incredibly impactful team play.
Moving on now to some of the more miscellaneous stuff when it comes to effective resource use, we have the most overlooked resource, which is the mount. For some reason, Paladins players do not use their mounts effectively as a resource unless they like buy master riding and have a specific plan to like charge into the enemy really early and get some weird position, right? Like you rarely see people use their mounts to the full potential and when you look at it like in terms of like the functions and stuff like i was talking about earlier mount is like a stupidly overpowered ability for everyone to have it's such a quick way to rotate for everybody that everyone has available and it gives you free three peaking which is like it, third person peeking is insane in a game like paladins it's so so good especially at the start of a round when information about where the enemies are is so important you should never ever ever be giving up this resource for free and you should 100 percent be getting the most value out of it that you possibly can right um if you remember this example that we had from the space lecture where the rom and the andra are diving if the rom dies first and creates that open space on that channel well, let's imagine if andra has to dash through that space to get to rom in time to finish the fight versus if andra just has his mount and can mount through that space in the same amount of time that it would take him to dash now he has his dashes for the fight which is like really important right like andra is a lot better at fighting close range when he has dashes versus when he doesn't so really you should be trying to get the most value out of all your abilities but the mount is probably one of the easiest changes you can make to your play to get more value out of this really important resource that you probably have been overlooking now the last thing i want to really make sure to, to hammer home is communication around effective resource use so in a team setting communicating as you're using an important cooldown like an ultimate or using an important resource is sort of the bare minimum right the most effective communication around resources will come from before you are using them right you want to have a plan for what resources you want to use and at what point you want to use them so you're not relying on sort of this spur of the moment moment communication often you have like two people saying they're alting at the same time when you only want to use one of those alts or something like that right and so this is especially important on things like the pushes and the start of mids when you have time to discuss and sort of know what to expect and so one of the good examples of this is your key resources like your ultimates right so you want to know what the function of that alt in your comp is and in the game and how you're going to set up for it so that it achieves that function right that's a really important part you should be communicating how you want to set up for it and uh, ideally if the, if you have time as well how they can possibly respond to it because that will affect how you use it and how you react to it right so often i can't believe how many times i've heard the plan for the mid is just like oh just con alt someone right like the, okay forehead just con alt someone sure you know don't say just you know use connell this mid or you know even like be more specific use connell in the backliner is better but still not enough right like it's much better to go into detail and like think how are you going to set up for it right like say go con go right lane with the dd and support and the offline is going to push through and dive the left and con looks for an alt as they're diving so that they you know push things into his los and he's safe with the support and the dd with him and all of that stuff right it allows con to fulfill that goal and fulfill the function of the con alt that you set up for yourself a lot easier than just saying, okay, go alt the backliner. Good luck. Have fun. Forehead. And key resources are key for a reason. They're, they're how you win the game. And you need to be talking about how you win the game. And the more communication you can have around that, the better. Now, there are also resources that aren't like necessarily super key resources that are situationally important resources to communicate about. And a really good example of this is heals. Uh, so for healers i've seen healers that calm like way too much they calm every single heal and it just sort of clogs comms and isn't super helpful and i've also seen healers that like rarely if ever communicate their heals and that's like way too little right so a heal's importance changes depending on the situation and so so should your comms around it right if you're Grover and there's three people low on your team and the, there's like people coming at them, you need to 100% be communicating when is that heal coming up because their play completely depends on it, right? But maybe at the start of the round when everyone's full health except for like one person, you don't really need to communicate that heal because there's a lot of other important communication that has to be happening at that time and you don't want to clog it up with something that's like sort of expected, right? Like if your point tank goes to point and takes some damage and no one else is taking damage, they should be expecting to get a heal and you should be healing them. You don't really need to communicate that to them. So really you just want to make sure you're matching your communication to how situationally important things are. So similar to this space lecture, I wanted to end with some tangible things that you can do and that you can think about to improve your play. And so the first of these is VODing.
Let's start with personal voting. In, in personal voting, it's really important to understand all of your abilities functions and seeing them as a resource allows you to sort of analyze whether you used them effectively. So when I'm personal voting with players, I always do this, although usually not super explicitly in terms of like their functions and stuff like that, right? Basically, every time a resource is used though, you want to evaluate if it got value and to evaluate if you got value, you sort of need to know the function of that ability. So for example, when I VOD with Penguin, I always harp on him for his Grumpy Bomb and Seedling usages because they're resources that are very easy to use ineffectively, use uh, not in line with their function, right? So these two abilities are, are abilities that can test a small amount of area or space for a very short time, right? So using them in any situation where that space is not important to the enemy or they, don't, they won't want that space is a bad use of that ability. And along with that, also throwing them at something or some space or someone that has a resource that can counter it readily available, so like a term siphon or a con shield, is also going to be a pretty bad use of it. So then, if you're just sort of throwing this ability out on cooldown just because you have it in its ability and you should use the things when they're off cooldown, that's often not going to be incredibly effective use because they require like this really specific positioning and timing and essentially that doesn't come up super often but it's really important to have when it does come up so you really want to make sure that you're not wasting these cooldowns and so when you're personal voting it's really important to evaluate everyone every time that you throw out an ability look at it look at its functions was that worth it did it fulfill its function did it get value yes or no and then you can sort of you know keep track of that maybe make a list identify patterns all that wonderful stuff that you do with personal voting it also can be really helpful to uh, VOD as a team and think specifically of resources. So just like we were talking about in the space lecture and, vo and team VODing and thinking about space in plays that happen, so too can you think about resources and break down plays in terms of resource use. Right, so if you break down a fight and identify how and where the key resources were used, you can identify problems pretty easily, honestly. Uh, so you identify the key resources for your win conditions, and if you pulled them off successfully and got the value out of them that you needed, and also identify sort of the enemy's key resources in that fight and see how you dealt with them or how you responded to them. And so like we're talking about with the space, uh, lecture space is a really important resource for this like if you just want to think about space as a resource and sort of what resources you invested into which spaces you got that can be a really helpful tool at sort of looking at why you lost sometimes because sometimes teams don't really understand why they lost and then if you you know look how you used a bunch of important resources to get space that wasn't actually super important for you in the fight it can be you know really telling to why you lost the fight did your resources sort of net a valuable space for a decent price? Often the answer is honestly no. And often teams do this with like their ultimate use. And this is, you know, really helpful and really, you know, good to do. And you should definitely keep doing it. But I would encourage you to do it with even more than just sort of your ultimate stuff. I mean, look at your space, like your key. If you're an aggressive comp, look at all of your tools. Identify all of the ones that you have that allow you to cross contested space or make space and look if they were used to do that and if they got value doing that and sort of things like that you know look at your key resources your ultimates your space all that sort of stuff so the last thing i want to make sure i go over is zoning because it's something that for some reason whatever reason paladins players have a really difficult time with this i've lost count of how many times i've seen pro teams just completely throw mids on the zones for absolutely no reason and so the purpose of zoning is to get the enemy to use resources to take back the space around the mid, right? They need to take the space from their sort of from their spawn to the mid positions that they want to be at. And by zoning, you uh, force them to, you know, use some resources, to take that rather than giving it for free. And so sort of the most key resources that you're looking for is mounts is probably the single most important one, but also a little bit of health can be really important and some cooldowns, especially their space making cooldowns can be really important because they're going to have to constantly be taking and making space as they come back towards the mid. And often people sort of overcommit resources to try to, you know, completely stop someone from getting through or to get picks, but really you only need to use your resources that can effectively use up their resources that they will want for retaking right like you don't need to commit anything that won't help you get sort of this mounts uh, the mounts off of them their their health out 
or these space taking resources. Remember, the space that they're trying to take between their spawn and the mid, the ones that you're contesting, is not that valuable of space. Really, you're only there because you can sort of contest it for free. So because it's not that valuable, you really don't want to commit a whole lot of resources to holding that space down and making sure that they can't get it. Uh, for example, one of the best ways to zone is just to simply use your rotational uh, resources so you move up from your mid positions a little bit and you just sort of poke don't use any big resources just get their mounts off make them take space into you and then just use your rotational resources to get back to your original and your your solidified mid positions don't stay up there use your rotational resources to get back into the more the, the better position right because your best positions are going to be around mid you're only really up there to get their their mounts up and a little bit of health early on but really, the point is just I encourage you to think about resource use and resource trades when you're zoning and when you're vauding your zones because it can be really telling as to why you're sort of messing them up and throwing mids. Okay, so that's it for lecture two. Thank you so much for making it all the way to the end again. I really hope this one helped you out. Next lecture, we're going to be going over some sort of basic applications of looking at space and resources together. So as always, make sure you leave me any feedback that you want to see going into the next one. I know I had a particular comment that this, the one on space was too long, and so I made sure to make this one a little bit shorter for you. Don't worry, I, I got your back on that one. <clears throat> Uh, but anyways, uh, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time in Lecture 3.